Singaporeans will head to the polls on the 1st of September to vote for a new president if more than one person qualifies to run for the highest office in the country. Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong has issued the writ of election with nomination day set on 22nd of August. If there is only one eligible candidate, the person will be declared the president on nomination day. Well, applications to apply for a certificate of eligibility opened in June and will close five days after the writ of election is issued. The Presidential Elections Committee will have up to 10 days to assess the applications. Parties will be informed before nomination day whether they qualify. Successful candidates will have their nomination papers and financial statements made public on nomination day. Now, after the campaigning period, the eve of polling day is for cooling off before voters cast their ballots. PM Lee has appointed Housing and Development Board CEO Tan Meng Tui to be the returning officer. He will oversee the impartial and smooth running of the polls. For the presidential hopefuls, on top of applying for a certificate of eligibility, they must have a certificate confirming which community they belong to. They must also have a political donation certificate, which declares that funds received are legally permitted. Private sector candidates will have to show they helmed a company with at least $500 million in shareholders' equity, while public sector applicants must have spent at least three years in a key public office. Each candidate must also put down a deposit of $40,500 by noon on nomination day. The money will be forfeited if a candidate loses at the polls with less than one-eighth or 12.5% of the votes. Well, four men have so far announced their intention to run for the presidency. Uh, let's take a look at who they are and what they champion. First, to throw his hat into the ring was former senior minister Dharman Shamugaratnam. Uh, he has more than 20 years of experience in politics and resigned all political positions in July to put himself forward as a candidate. The 66-year-old formally launched his bid weeks later and says he wants to serve as president for a new and more challenging era. His campaign slogan is respect for all. Second, businessman George Go. Now, he brought electronics store Harvey Norman to Asia and is the group executive chairman of OSEA International, a listed company with a market capitalization of about $45 million. The 63-year-old says he's confident of meeting the $500 million share equity requirement. He also maintains his independence in spite of his previous appointment as a non-resident ambassador to Morocco. Entering later in the game was former GIC Chief Investment Officer Ang Kok Song. Now, he's currently the Executive Chairman of Avanda Investment Management, which he co-founded in 2015. Mr Ng calls himself an independent prospective candidate who will be able to unite the country to face an uncertain future. At 75, Mr Ng is one of the oldest candidates in the lineup. Now, the fourth person to announce his bid is Tan Kin Lian, who is also 75. Now, Mr. Tan ran in the 2011 presidential election and came last among four candidates. Now, he lost his deposit as he couldn't get enough votes. The former NTUC income CEO says he hopes this year will be his time and he wants to play an active role as president to improve the lives of Singaporeans. Well, several of the presidential hopefuls have reacted to the writ of election being issued. George Goh says he is waiting for the certificate of eligibility to be issued by the Presidential Elections Committee. He issued a statement saying that he hopes the decision would be made sooner rather than close to the deadline. And that's to help eligible candidates prepare properly for the campaign. By law, the committee must inform applicants of its decision no later than the eve of nomination day. A fellow presidential hopeful, Ng Kok Song, says the issuance of the writ of election is an important milestone. He says it reminds Singaporeans that the institution of the elected president is anchored in the Constitution. Mr Ng issued a statement as well. Now he's saying he's ready for the journey ahead and thanked all who are supporting him. 
He pledged to give his best for the privilege of serving all Singaporeans. The presidential hopeful Tarman Chamugaratnam says he strongly favours a contest, be it two-cornered, three or even four. He spoke to the media after the writ of election was issued. The former senior minister said the competition will grant a stronger mandate to the winning candidate. I think each of the candidates who have um, put themselves forward so far um, bring their own track records, their convictions and their perspectives of what they'd like the presidency to be. Um, and we should each be judged and evaluated on the basis of what we bring Singapore. We're also keeping an eye out for any comments by presidential hopeful Tan Kim Lian. The former NTUC income CEO launched his presidential bid earlier today and we'll have those details a little later in the program. Well, Prime Minister Lee Hsien Lung is calling for Singaporeans to vote wisely for the best candidate as the next president. He says that's because the role symbolises the country's unity and aspirations. PM Lee stressed the important role of the president in a Facebook post after he issued the writ of election. He hopes all Singaporeans can listen to what each candidate has to say and assess them and their views before casting their vote. Well, in light of the announcement of the key dates for the presidential election, this year's Teachers' Day school holiday has been pushed back. The GCE N-level exams have also been rescheduled. The school holiday for Teachers' Day now falls on the 11th of September. It was initially scheduled for the 1st of September, at the same day as polling day. Now, N-level exams scheduled for the 11th of September will now be held on the 12th and the 20th. Well, this year's presidential election is open to all following the last poll that was reserved for the Malay community. It also is set to be more inclusive as postal voting will be permitted. Tan Sehui finds out how these will make a difference at this year's election. In 2017, only Malay candidates were allowed to run for presidency. This limited the pool of eligible candidates, resulting in a walkover. Madam Halima Yaakob then became Singapore's eighth president. This time, however, the contest is open for all races. The ground expectation, the public's expectation, is that they hope to see a contest. Now, this is not something the public can contrive. It will, of course, have to fall on people who know, who read the rules, who know that they qualify, and for them to consider whether they would take up uh, the opportunity and take up the um, responsibility of putting themselves forward. Overseas postal voting is also allowed for the first time. There are around 200,000 Singaporeans living overseas. Special voting booths will also be set up at nursing homes. Analysts say this will affect how results play out, especially in scenarios like the 2011 presidential elections. Dr Tony Tan had won only by a slight margin of around 7,000 votes, or 0.35 per cent. Every vote counts, um, you know, so even if, let's say, we have, um, you know, 10,000 uh, postal ballots, uh, they could very well make it a vital difference in a very close contest. The electoral process, you know, in which we are able to be more inclusive, right, enabling as many Singaporeans to vote. And I think, you know, all that helps to strengthen, um, you know, Singapore's uh, democracy. New advertising rules will also apply once campaigning kicks off. This includes showing the full names of those who play an active role in publishing or paying for election advertising content. Analysts say they'll help to create more openness and accountability, which are crucial when voters head to the polls. Holding the second key to unlock national reserves and championing social causes. These are just some of the roles of the President of Singapore. But observers say one misconception Singaporeans may have is that the President acts as an opposing force to the government. Tan Sehui speaks to analysts to find out more. I, Salapan Ramanathan, 
It was 14 years ago when Singapore first dipped into its past reserves. Then President S. R. Narayan gave the green light to draw down $4.9 billion. It was amid the country's worst recession since independence. More recently, the COVID-19 crisis, President Halima Yaakob approved a total draw of around $42.9 billion over a span of three pandemic years. A significant amount of funds, you know, running to tens of billions of dollars, you know, were, were needed, you know, to protect jobs and protect uh, livelihoods. Uh, so people understand, you know, that, that second key uh, function of the president, um, you know, to, to ensure that drawdowns uh, will not compromise uh, Singapore's ability, um, you know, to, to have sufficient fiscal uh, resources. The president plays key ceremonial roles as well, such as presiding the National Day Parade and receiving foreign dignitaries. Being involved in the community through charity acts also comes with the job. For instance, Madam Halima championed gender equality, workers' rights and interfaith harmony. While Mr Nathan founded the President's Challenge to rally the nation to care for the less privileged, Dr Tan gave recognition to the work of nurses and teachers and supported local artists. As one analyst says, a president has a duty to unite and inspire a nation. Somebody who has a heart, who cares for the state of our community, the society that we're building, and somebody that we feel uh, can inspire and cause us to rally around certain causes or certain issues uh, that are community-based. Since the presidency is an elected one, analysts say this may give voters an impression that the president can be a counterweight to the ruling government. I think one big misconception is that the president functions almost like an alternative centre of political power. It is important for Singaporeans to better understand you know, what the president can do and what the president cannot do because, you know, the president doesn't have those powers uh, in the constitution. While the president does not have executive power to shape policies, analysts say it's a position that helps to maintain integrity in the government. This includes being able to veto senior appointments in public service and other key organs of the state.